brum, brumby. That's, that's such a weird word to say. We will all be brumsy, brumsy. <laughs> I'm Kristen, also known as Will and Vine, here on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, on Ravelry, and pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all the knitting, all the sewing, all the making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And yes, it is. It is Thursday. It's a gorgeous, hot summer day here in Bushwick, Brooklyn, and uh, I, I have I have some stuff to share with you. So uh, as usual, I have some knitting. I have quite a bit of sewing. Because it's summer, I feel like the the sewing content is is has been very heavy these past couple of weeks. So I hope you guys don't mind that. Uh, normally, I like to keep it a little bit 50-50, but so far because of the heat, I feel like I feel like the sewing's winning out. Uh, but anyway, I'm just so happy that you are are here uh, for the show and. I guess we should we shall get into things. I have a couple of announcements. Uh, as always, we have our knit alongs happening over in the Wool and Vine Ravelry group, which if you have not joined yet, highly recommend that you do. It's the place to be if you wanna partake in any of our knit alongs, sew alongs, make alongs, what have you, or just join the general chatter surrounding the podcast. Uh, so yeah, we do have the box of socks knit along that's happening. That's a year long knit along. And then there's year of the garment knit along, which is another year long knit along, make along that is happening over in the Ravelry group. So definitely hop on over there, check it out. Uh, lots and lots of inspiration and wonderful conversation happening over there. And last but not least, I have some winners to announce for our Uncomfort Zone make along that was supposed to be a initially a two month long knit along, but due to life and my shortcomings and just the way things panned out, it turned out to be a four month long knit along, but Honestly, I was I was I was completely fine with that because it was just such a fun knit along, make along, getting to see all of you stretch your limits, e experiment with new projects. Uh, the whole idea behind the make along the make along was to, you know, choose a pattern, choose a designer, choose a color palette that you normally wouldn't gravitate towards, and just have fun with it and learn and possibly learn something new. Uh, and I feel like a lot of you have accomplished that. And at the end of the episode, I will of course share a little slideshow uh, sharing all of your wonderful makes from that knit along. Uh, and if you are not interested in this, uh, in the winners, I will post a time a, a timestamp at the bottom of the screen so you can skip ahead to the meat of the episode. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, if you are here here to see who won the make along. Uh, I have some winners. Uh, and first, let me share the prizes. These are some hand dyed mini skeins uh, that I dyed. Villain Vine Yarns, my hand dyed yarn company. Uh, these are perfect for either scrappy blankets, scrappy socks, any scrappy project in general, color work, you name it. Uh, these were just so fun to dye. I, I had some um, leftover minis in my inventory that I was not, never gonna die, never gonna sell. And instead of just letting them sit there, I wanted them to go to someone who's actually going to enjoy them. So uh, please do not ask me if I intend to die minis in the future. Minis are not my forte. So <laughs> these are just kind of a one-off uh, thing that I would, that I died for fun for the giveaway. Uh, and yeah, I hope the winners enjoy these as well, as much as I enjoyed dying them. But without further ado, uh, let's get on to some winners because we have two winners that I drew at random from one from the Ravelry group and one from Instagram, uh, whoever used the hashtag UCZone K-A-L. Uh, I used a random selector for that hashtag. And our first winner from the Ravelry group uh, was number 405. Uh, AYB Knits, and she knit a throwback cardigan by Andrea Maori, and this was her first time picking out her very own color palette. And you guys, it turned out so beautiful. Um, I can't tell you how daunting it can be to pick out your own colors for a color work project. I have completely been there, and when you're presented with all the colors, it can be very, very overwhelming. So, so congratulations to AYB Knits, very well deserved. Uh, please get in touch with me contact me on Ravelry letting me know that you are the winner with your shipping info and I will get a skein of the, I will get this bundle of minis out to you ASAP. So yay, congrats to our very first winner. 
And our Instagram winner, which I chose at random, uh, is at the New York Year. And she picked up Knitting Brioche. She knit this beautiful, beautiful shawl. I believe it was by Nancy Marchant. Um, and it was a belated Mother's Day gift to her mother. So, and it turned out absolutely beautiful. Uh, and she's a fellow New Yorker, so hello. Uh, big congrats to you for picking up Brioche and learning it and nailing it. And it, your shawl turned out absolutely beautiful. And I hope your mother loved it. And yeah, it looked like a very, very complicated project to begin with. So kudos to you. Uh, Amazing, amazing, beautiful work. And yay, can, uh, get in touch with me so I can send your prize out to you as well. Uh, so yay, big, 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 big congrats to everybody who participated in the make along again. Uh, and I will post a little slideshow at the end so you can see all the wonderful, beautiful projects that everyone made and hopefully in get inspired to tackle something that you've been wanting to uh, try or experiment with that's generally outside of your com uncomfort, that's generally outside of your comfort zone. So. All right, that puts a cap on that make-along. Uh, I will, of course, after I publish this podcast, I will unlock the thread so whoever wants to partake and just keep the conversation going, uh, I will I will facilitate that as well. So, woohoo! All right, um, other announcements? I think that is it. So let's get into the nitty-gritty of the podcast. Uh, but first, just a wonderful word from my amazing sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, tech, and more, even sewing in the fiber arts. I love learning new things when it comes to knitting, sewing, photography, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down. And because I know you love learning new things too, I partnered up with Skillshare and they are offering my viewers two months free to try their platform. So give Skillshare a go and learn something new. Just click on the link in the description box below, entering the code at checkout, and enjoy! And thanks Skillshare! And welcome back! All right, next up on the needles uh, is a new cast on that I shared with you last week, and that is the Love Note crop top uh, sweater by Tin Can Knits. And I am also knitting it out of my hand tied yarn, Woolen Vine Yarns, uh, holding two bases together my Nouveau base, which is a single ply superwash merino, and my Ghost Lace base, which is a lace mohair silk blend. And it is like a cloud, my friends. It is so soft and so fluffy and way, 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 way too hot to be knitting in this weather. But you know, I'm a glutton for punishment. So um, I'm staying true to form. Uh, and here is where I am with my love note. I've, I've finished the yoke, I've separated the sleeves, and believe it or not, um, I actually re recast this on from, from the last time I recorded last week. Um, I messed up a couple of times on the lace and I, I should have been using wide, a longer circumference of circulars because I really couldn't read my knitting as well. So I just said, you know, instead of ripping back, because let's face it, ripping back mohair is no picnic. Um, so I decided to just recast on again using, I believe these are 24 inch circulars and these are my Luka needles, my wooden needles. And I think they go so well. They match so well with the colorway, um, which is my Bronte colorway, by the way, um, inspired by um, the Bronte sisters. Um, so yeah, here is where I am. And it has a provisional cast on. So you cast, you provisionally cast on and then knit the yoke and then you knit the, the neck band ribbing um, last. So yeah, here's, you know, and right now because it's not blocked, it just looks like fluffy barf, but you know, that, that is the nature of lace knitting. Fluffy barf is a given. I know a lot of people say, you know, I don't like using the word mindless when it comes to knitting, but let's face it, there are some knits that are, are just mindless. You don't have to put much thought into them. You just cast on and you go. Um, and that's what this project is for me. Um, you know, granted I did have to, um, you know, pay attention for the lace weight, for, for the uh, the lace pattern, but honestly, it was such an intuitive knit. I could just memorize the pattern and watch a movie um, while I knit it, which which happened to be Little Women on on Netflix. If in case you're curious, um, yeah, I think I surprised myself with that choice selection. Not not that it is surprising. Um, it was believe it or not that I can't believe that movie came out 25 years ago. That was with Susan Sarandon, Winona Ryder, Claire Danes, Samantha Mathis. Eric Stoltz and Christian Bale. 
total blast from the past. I think I was looking for Mary Shelley, the movie uh, Mary Shelley, and that was not available on Netflix, but then I was scrolling through and Little Women struck my fancy. So I'm like, you know what? Let's let's relive some of my adolescence. <laughs> and so yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed watching that while knitting on the yoke of this. Um, so yes, that is pretty much all I have to say about that. Um, it eats up a lot of yarn, but I think I have about maybe 40 grams left of each skein, I want to say. Uh, so yeah, in case you're curious, I'm holding these two yarns together. This is my um, my ghost lace, and this is Nouveau, my single ply base. Um, so yeah, that those are my, my knitting projects of the week. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, I, I am, just a heads up, I will not be podcasting next week because Dennis and I are heading up to Cape Cod uh, where we have a summer house out there. So I anticipate there will be lots of knitting time. So I am planning to bring some projects with me. Um, that one I'm bringing, I'm bringing my, I'm definitely bringing my Penguono, which I have not touched in a while. That is a scrappy project, my friends. That one I'm just picking up and putting down as I come to it. Um, and I'm also bringing my Odyssey, a shawl that I cast on for another vacation a couple months ago. Uh, when I went to Jamaica, I cast on the Odyssey shawl by Hohi Locatelli using some Countess of Blaze colorways uh, yarn that I picked up from EYF. And yeah, I just have not finished it. Um, so hopefully I will be able to put a dent in that uh, while I'm out there for the whole week. Um, and Bella's coming with us. So yeah, we are bringing Bella. Uh, she's gonna get, you know, not we're not taking her to the beach, but she is gonna get some nice nature exposure. Um, not in nature, but just, you know, change of scenery, I wanna say. So <laughs> that'll be really fun for her. Not not the car ride up, but you know, once she's once she's at the house, she's a happy camper. Pun totally not intended. But anyway, um, yeah, that is the knitting rundown for this week. So I'm gonna move along to sewing. As for sewing this week, I am wearing a new make. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, this has never been worn on the podcast. So you might be thinking, did she make that? Did she not make that? Nine out of 10, I probably made it. So <laughs> guys, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm extra fancy today. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is a new make. This is the Charlie dress by By Hand London. I always feel like slipping up every time I'm gonna say that because when I say something, it's like, this is a pattern by, the company name is By Hand London. So following like two by bys next to each other trips me up just a little bit. But yes, this is a pattern by By Hand London. Uh, one of my favorite independent pattern companies. Uh, so I will stand up so you can see. And it's kind of, I want to say like a retro kind of like um, swing dress almost, but at the same time, it's just like a really sweet kind of sundress. Um, so it has a square neckline, um, straps, plain straps. They're not adjustable. You just kind of have to measure them out as you go. Um, and then, you know, for this, I used a contrast black band and then some dark gothy, florally fabric that I had in my stash for quite some time. So um, it is, this is quilting cotton, believe it or not, which is not my favorite fabric to work with. But for this pattern, I feel like it worked out really, really well. Quilting cotton is honestly, you can't go wrong with quilting cotton for a sundress. Um, but it does have princess seams, uh, very, very slight princess seams. So they're not you know, I know there are a lot more patterns with a lot more, with a more dramatic curve, but these are very straightforward, so they were easy to execute. It has a gathered skirt, and then at the bottom, which you're not gonna be able to see, hopefully I can pop a photo of it here so you can see in all its glory, but um, there is a ruffle. There's a ruffle at the bottom, and it is very dark, but yeah, it is, this was a beast. I'm not gonna lie. This was a beast of a ruffle to sew on, to gather, and it goes all the way around. And it comes all the way down just right below my knee. Um, yeah, and when I was, when it came to sewing this pattern, it was very straightforward, very simple to whip up, uh, but I felt the pattern felt short when it came to describing the frill section, which is the ruffle at the bottom. Um, it basically, on the pattern, it says cut out three rectangles straight across. It didn't give you a length or anything or me you know width or measurement or anything. So I just went by what the photo was telling me to do and thankfully it all worked out. But when I sewed the whole strip together, it looked insanely long and I actually considered shortening it, but I was like, you know what? I feel like 
I'm just gonna run with it. <laughs> so I must have sat there for like a whole hour um, gathering this ginormous um, strip, rectangle strip, uh, and so it could fit, you know, the, the circumference of the bottom of the skirt. And thankfully it all worked out. Um, but yeah, sewing it on, gathering it, making sure it was completely even. Qu with quilting cotton, it was, it was not fun. Um, I think in hindsight, I, instead of doing like the two rows of basting stitches, which is what you use to generally gather um, a skirt together, I should have used the dental floss method where you take, um, what is it? Uh, you take dental floss. Oh, okay. You use a zigzag stitch and you uh, zigzag across um, a strip of dental floss. If, I know it sounds crazy, but you um, zigzag over the dental floss encasing the dental floss in those zigzag stitches and then you gather the skirt together so it's a lot more fluid and that's what I should have used for this but at the same time it's not as stable as the the basting stitches um you know you kind of have to like use a lot of pins but anyway um it is done it is done I love it um I didn't I will be totally honest I didn't think I was gonna love the finished product but I cannot get enough of this dress it, it makes me so happy um it was a little like for my taste it's just a little too a little too 1950s for my taste which i used to be into i i definitely go through like period phases where it's like suddenly i'm into the 50s suddenly i'm into the 20s suddenly like right now i feel like i'm into the late 1800s early 1900s edwardian victorian cusp type thing um but you know what you know i i can make it my own in you know through accessories or you know i feel like even the fabric itself it just kind of you know speaks to that era and it kind of meshes eras together so i get the best of both worlds if that makes any sense so yeah very very happy with this even you know again quilting cotton i think i got this on sale at fabric.com uh for like five dollars a yard so i think this is a complete win um and this i will show you the zipper it's a side zipper which i i pretty much nailed. Um, I, everything match, everything is even, it matches out. Um, even the waist, the gatherers meet at the same point. They'll turn around so you can see the back. Um, yeah, just an overall pretty simple, very simple, uh, dress to whip up. There's also a version where you can just completely omit the ruffle and the gathers all together. It's a, just a simple A-line, uh, circle skirt, which I think I might tackle next time. Uh, I think I might even try adjusting the neckline, like doing away with the band, uh, maybe lining it and changing the shape of the neckline. Cause generally I don't really gravitate towards square necklines, but you know, I could totally see making this kind of like a scoop neck or a sweetheart. <sighs> the world's your oyster when it comes to sewing. Um, yeah, it's just I have to get over my fear of messing up. <laughs> it's like whenever I try to deviate and try my own, you know, try altering a pattern or modifying it, I feel like I'm just going to mess it up. But you know what? You just have to like, you have to go for it. Go for it. Just go for it. Go for it, Kristen. Anyway, I'm thinking out loud right now. But uh, yeah, that is my finished object of the week. Um, I have another finished object that I'm not wearing right now. This was kind of my muslin for our Brumby skirt sew along that I'm going to be hosting. Um, and a lot of you have already purchased the pattern. A lot of you are super excited for it. <laughs> Makes me super excited. Um, I was hoping to get around to filming it this week, but I don't think it's in the cards. Just a lot of things happening. I didn't even get to do a shop update this week. I'm just, you know, I, I actually, throughout my back this week. I was planning on dyeing yarn. I was actually planning on having an update, but <laughs> earlier in the week, I actually threw out my back, believe it or not. I have no idea how that happened. I think it had to do with the air conditioner. I don't know. Like I, I took a shower before I went to bed and I think the combination of the cold and I, I don't know. I, I, science, science, my friends. I looked this up online and yeah, the air conditioner can cause like back pain, muscle spasms and everything. Anyway, I was, I was not in good shape like for two days. So I'm like, all right, my body's telling me to take it easy, slow my roll. So I just, I decided to take the week off because I'm my own boss and I can do that. And it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, my friends. But anyway, um, I decided to, you know, obviously I took care of some shipping. Uh, I, I took care of shipping this week and then some other loose ends that I wanted to tie up before going away on vacation. Um, but then I also just took some time out to sew and to make things. And it's just been a really nice break. So impromptu vacation. Um, I did sew 
my first version of the Brumby skirt, which is a pattern by Megan Nielsen, um, using the moth fabric that I recently purchased. And again, this is quilting cotton. And I did want a Brumby skirt in this fabric. However, in hindsight, I think the fabric is a little too busy for the actual pattern because there's a lot going on with the pattern itself. Um, but at the same time, I think I fell in love with the fact that it had a metal zipper in the back. And I really like the combination of uh, the, the gold zipper with the fabric. Um, so yeah. Um, and I chose this pattern because number one, it's very simple. I was going to go with the zinnia skirt, but a lot of you pointed out that the zinnia skirt was very limited when it came to sizes. Uh, so what I really do like about the Brumby skirt is that it's very size inclusive. I believe the, the waistband goes up to a size, I want to say 38 or 48. I'll pop it in the down bar below. So I feel like it's very size inclusive and yeah, just an overall very simple pattern to whip up. Although I am glad that I did a muslin, muslin, this is wearable, I've been wearing it to death. Um, I'll stand up so you can see, but it falls like right at my waist here. Um, I did have some issues when it came to sewing, not, not because the pattern was hard, just my my personal shortcomings. I sewed on the waistband upside down, uh, so I had to unpick everything and redo that. Um, and then sewing an exposed zipper. This was a new technique for me, and I will get close so you can see. But yeah, this is a, an exposed zipper, meaning that, you know, you can see the zipper from the outside. It's not concealed like a an invisible zip. Um, yeah, so this is a little hurdle for me, but I think, you know, if I, if I do a good job explaining it, I should make it a little, I should make it easy, an easy process for, for newbies uh, to tackle um, because ideally it's it's super easy. Um, and I actually deviated from the directions from what the, the pattern told me. I felt like it was a little vague when it came to explaining how to do the exposed zip, but either way. Um, and the cool thing is she says you can um, swap it out for another zipper of your choice. So either an invisible zip or what have you. Um, you can even do an overlap zip, which I'm not too crazy about. Um, and one thing that I surprised myself with is I decided instead of, because I am running out of serger thread, <laughs> I decided to opt for um, some, did I do it on here? I think I did it for one seam. I used the serger on um, most of the seams, but then I think, yeah, on, oh, for the pockets, I actually used a some pinking shears because let's face it if you, you do not need a serger um, a serger is fancy it obviously gives a very nice clean ready to made ready to wear finish but the vintage way to do things is use pinking shears and let me see these are pinking shears so they have you've probably seen these in you know grade school or what have you in kindergarten they have these a lot for arts and crafts but they have ser like a serrated zigzag edge which prevents fraying in fabric when you when you cut into fabric um it's a it's a simple way to finish an edge in sewing and i i actually kind of like it i don't know I'm, it's growing on me again um because you get so enchanted with the with the serger this thing right here um it's kind of nice to come back to something very simple and just appreciate, you know, kind of like the vintage quality behind it. I don't know. Go figure. But, um, yeah, I mean, that is my, my first Brumby skirt. And for the second Brumby skirt that I'm going to be using for the sew along is this kind of like butterscotch golden Caroline Dunder knit. This has your name all over it. I can tell. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Something about this color spoke to me, so um, I, I picked it. I ordered it from Fabric.com, um, which, by the way, I am I am an affiliate for Fabric.com now. So what that basically means is that if you guys click the link to Fabric.com below in the description box and purchase from Fabric.com, I get a little bit of kickback from that, and uh, you know, ba basically. Um, Whatever I get from Skillshare and Fabric.com, uh, I'll go back into the production of making this podcast. So anything that I make and share on the podcast, a portion of that comes from whatever I get from my sponsors. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, guys. Uh, and yeah, I do this because it's it's fun and I love sharing what I make with you. And it, it just means the world uh, that you guys, you know, want to support the podcast. So anyway, again, it's totally optional. If you don't want to do that, that's completely fine. But anyway, just so you know, and I'm being completely transparent, that's what's happening.
thing. And yeah, so anyway, thank you fabric.com for onboarding me and my podcast. So anyway, um, yeah, so this is the fabric that I'm gonna be using to make my second Brumby skirt. Um, and then this is the zipper that I'm gonna be using. And the pattern actually calls for a, a nine inch exposed zipper or a jean zipper, I should say. Um, but the one that I happen to have in my stash is a seven inch, 18 centimeter, which is completely fine. You just have to, you know, when uh, the pattern tells you to cut out X length for the zipper, you just alter it do the difference of, you know, whatever the size zipper that they call for from the one that you have. Um, so yeah, it's not a big deal at all. And this is, let me see, a jean zipper, brass jean zipper, uh, by I believe Coates and Clark. If, yeah, Coates and Clark. So yeah, it's the same exact zipper that I used for my first Brumby skirt. Uh, yeah, so there is that. And this is a crepe de chine, in case you were wondering. So it's got a little bit of texture. It feels it's a little slippery. I feel like it's going to be a little bit fiddly, but it's definitely more structured than chiffon um, and probably a lot more stable than Shelly fabric that I usually gravitate towards. So this is actually going to be my first time working with crepe de chine. So I'm, I'm very excited. Um, you might get to witness me screaming my head off and there might be a lot of bleeps uh, while I work with this, but that, that shall be... Um, determined. Um, you know, it'll be a surprise, surprise in the episode. Um, yeah, we shall see. And now the elephant in the room, which you've probably been staring at the entire time wondering, what is she wearing? My lovely assistant Margot, the mannequin, is wearing a something that I started yesterday. Uh, this is the See and Sew so by Butterick. This is B6543. And this is one of the patterns that I got from, uh, this is one of the patterns that I purchased from uh, the butter sale online and yeah, it's, it says it's, yes, it's easy, but honestly, I've been wrestling with this thing all day. It's not as easy as it looks. They lied. They lied. The pattern lied. Um, but I did deviate and go off on my own little tangent with it and I, hopefully I'll be able to discuss it with you on the next podcast. But yeah, it is, um, unlike the pattern, I completely lined it because this fabric here, you, you're not going to be able to see it. Let me see if I have a scrap. So this is the scrap. This is a scrap of fabric that I used. And again, got it from fabric.com. It's, I want to say this lovely kind of like lightweight gauze, black gauze fabric with, um, these gold metallic gold pinstripes running through. And I'm going to see if I can get that too. There we go. So yeah, it's very sheer. So I did line it with um, some, I wanna say cotton, like a cotton silk blend. So it's very lightweight. Um, and this fabric also crinkles. So this is my first time working with crinkled fabric, which is was interesting. It wasn't terrible, but um, it is, you know, it, it definitely is a slight learning curve for me, but I like the effect of it. Um, and I had, let me see, what else do I want to say about this? So yeah, it's a wrap dress with a tie at the side and then the bottom has like a, a, a long scalloped edge and it's a maxi skirt. Um, and again, like I lined it and I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, it's, it's a work in progress, my friends. So I'm, I'm very excited about it. I, it was a dress that I was, uh, sewing for vacation. The whole idea was to make something a little nautical, a little, um, you know, versatile for vacation that I could just chuck on for dinner or just wherever. And you know, it's kind of turning into something a little bit more formal. <laughs> so it's really amazing what fabric can do to a pattern. It's just, you know, it's wild. So, you know, you, like looking at the pattern itself, it just looks like, you know, a spring summer dress. But once you add like a dark fabric to it, it suddenly it's so much more dramatic. And that's it. That is sewing. Wow. That was a, like, I wanted to keep this episode kind of short and succinct, but it just, I don't think that's going to happen. We'll see how good my editing skills. If I can get this under 20 minutes, that would be awesome. Um, but anyway, that is it for this week, my friends. Uh, I am not going to have a shop update on Friday as usual, and I'm not going to have an update the following week because again, vacation, uh, is happening. Uh, but I will be back with another update on the 16th of August, 5 PM Eastern time. I'll send out a newsletter, which if you haven't already do send out, um, do subscribe by going to volanvineyarns.com and clicking on the newsletter link every week. Uh, when I have an update, I will send out a newsletter letting you know what will be in the shop. Um, so you can, you know, 
plan out your, your shopping lists and everything. Uh, so a lot of you found that, find it really helpful. So I'm, I'm glad that works out. And yeah, thank you, thank you again to everyone who does subscribe and check out my shop updates. It really means, it means a lot. So yay. Um, all right, so the blather segment, the segment where I chat about what's been happening in my life, should you care to stick around? I think, I think I covered pretty much everything. Uh, yeah, I threw out my back this week, feeling much better. Um, yeah, it's like, I feel like when stuff like that happens, you really just kind of have to listen to your body, slow down, take things easy, because yeah, I have been trying to do a lot of things in the past couple of days, like getting it all done. And sometimes you just need to slow down. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, Bella's coming with us again. Uh, last time we took her up, we uh, she got very, very sick in the car. So we did take her to the vet and she did prescribe her um, some anxiety pills and something for her nausea. And she did, you know, we, you know, we, the other option, because we are going away for a while, um, you know, we, leave her, you know, at a, a boarding place. She knows the people, they take very, very good care of her, but you know, it's it's a long time to be away from us and I miss her and even the vets that you recommended, she goes, you're better off just taking her with you and you know, here are some medications to kind of like calm her down. Um, so yeah, we have that covered. Um, Judgy, our neighborhood, our friendly neighborhood stray cat. I, she unfortunately is going to have to fend for herself. Um, but you know what? There's a grocery store around the corner. I'm sure she will be fine. Um, she'll find something. Um, and there are plenty of mice to be had in, in this neighborhood. So, um, <laughs> not in here, thankfully, but, um, but yeah, so I'm trying to think that, I think that is it for this week, guys. Uh, I will, I will of course be posting, um, all my shenanigans in Cape Cod on my Instagram feed. Should you care to follow me? Uh, you know, I do a lot of Instagram stories for that. And yeah, I will, I will see you next time. As always, thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to like and subscribe below. I generally put out an episode every Friday. Um, and yeah, so I think the next time I record, I will be posting the the sew along. So in the meantime, if you are excited for the sew along, gather your materials. Uh, I will put a hashtag in the down bar below um, in case you want to start sharing your progress on on Instagram, or uh, I will create a thread in the in the Vol and Vine Ravelry group on Ravelry. So yeah, we'll, we'll get the ball rolling. We'll get the ball rolling. But yeah, when I return, I will record the the tutorial and soon we will all be brumby skirt twinsies so uh yeah I'm, I'm very very excited for this so anyway happy knitting happy sewing happy making and i will see you next time